Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. We've talked about several times on the show. We've talked about like uh, TV shows and best shows and best movies and these type of things. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of times what makes these shows and movies or whatever is like, it's not necessarily the whole show sometimes. It's just, it's like these moments that stand with you and stick with you over time. So I wanted to discuss some of those great TV moments them classic moments that made you fall in love or fall out of love with shows. So the first moment, uh, what is the what is the TV moment or moments that made you laugh the hardest? All right, it's a moment. Um, like me and my mom, I grew up with my mom. You feel me? Like we twenty years apart. So the show she like, I like too. So it's like an age difference between me and my wife because my wife don't watch real old shows from the 60s and 70s. What I still do is I catch them on YouTube. My mama still watches reruns. So mm-hmm. Sam for the Sun, that should be my mom's show. You watch that shit all the time. Like she still watch reruns. I catch it every now and then on YouTube. There's one episode, um, and all, all, all old heads out there, you remember this episode when I described it. Lamont goes and finds a casket. He buys the casket for <laughs> $25. He bought two caskets. He's trying to flip the caskets because you know Sam and Son <laughs> junk dealers. Yeah. So he bring, he bring the caskets. He bring the caskets. <laughs> he bring the caskets home. <laughs> I can't even get it up. He gonna, he gonna tell us in a minute. I promise. I promise. So he bring the caskets home. He called Fred outside to help him with the shit. Fred see the shit's in panic already. Like, oh hell no. And from then to the end of the episode, it ain't nothing but pure laughter, yo. He's doing everything he can. Trying to kill him? <laughs> no, he's just superstitious and shit. He don't want caskets in his house. He says a bad omen. <laughs> that is some oh, shit. Oh, my God. The mom was like, man, look, if we don't sell the caskets, we can cut the front off and make it like a bench. <laughs> make two benches. <laughs> he's sitting in no casket bench. Oh shit! The oh, friend like, all right. If them shits go, if they go in the house, I'm sleeping outside in the junkyard. Yeah. He thought his dad was joking. He put them shits in the house. Nighttime came. Fred went outside, got in the back of the truck with the blanket and the pull on lady. I mean, <laughs> I mean that Fred. I ain't mad at Fred. Fire <laughs> yeah. or a ghost or some creepy shit to come fucking with you at night when you're trying to get your sleep on. Oh, that's a. That's my TV moment. I'm sorry, shit. <laughs> that is it. That is it. Uh, what about well, you? Mine, I actually have two. Um, but mine, I'm a little more contemporary. Um, okay. So my first made me laugh. Uh, these really could have been like moments that made me cry because they made me laugh. Till I cry. Um, okay. So I got the episode of Martin when they went to Chilligan's Island. Oh, shit. And they were fighting that rat and it kept coming back. And like the first time it popped out, like I laughed till I cried. But when it came back again, and it was just like the shit that was being said, it was so realistic to me. And I don't know why that ugly, fake looking rat made me cry like that, but I could not stop laughing. The way that it was like the way they was throwing punches looked hilarious. The the rat itself, the way they the way you could tell somebody off camera like threw it at them, because it just flew on the camera all unnatural, like like oh. catapult or something. <laughs> like that shit just flew on the camera and Oh man, like the the fact that they were even that ain't no damn puppy. <laughs> like that whole scene just like it was just so surreal. Like I think that might have been one of the first like TV moments that made me like kind of like snot and laugh and cry and like have all of the, like them hard go falls, you know what I mean? 
Um, <laughs> classic <laughs> TV moments. The fall. You know, so I mean, you know the fall. I think everybody, if you ever watch Martin, everybody remember that episode and keep right into yeah. that point of research. I think that's one of the <laughs> funny moments everybody had. Uh, and I could, I could uh, up there with it on the same show. This is not my second moment, but when I'm thinking about Martin, when that nigga had that fucking fake dog on the Nino bro, so about the TV player, he told the bitch to sit at that nigga, that damn dog said. Fucking fans in the sand, honestly. Oh, he was dragging that bitch around so hard. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> That's that. another classic motherfucker. That whole episode was classic as shit. Yeah. I oh. think he was the cast of that episode of shit. Man, that's probably one of them. That's probably one of the the best moments of Martin where you saw like everybody on the cast break character for a minute. Like they couldn't help but to laugh at some of that shit. Like everybody was sitting there like laughing to themselves, trying to cover their face and shit. Like the shit was stupid. Um, but great time. Good job, Martin. Um and then my second moment though, like that made me almost piss my pants the first time I saw it was on Fresh Prince. Uh it was the episode when I think Prince had uh he had got to hanging with this girl and they was like going to like oh, shit. Dance and, shit and all that. But like because he was hanging with her and like getting all this attention and stuff and being able to go out, he won't hang in with uh the family no more and Carlton got jealous and it was like Will's birthday or something and Will had went somewhere and didn't come home. <laughs> And when he got back home, Carlton was mad because he come home for his birthday. Carlton was like, "Man, I got you, a, I got you a cake and everything. It was a sunny to see you. It's a nigga deal. It's sunny." And the way that nigga was crying that song out, oh my god! I, I literally like. I remember the first time I saw that episode. I was sitting there eating dinner with my mom. Like, I remember almost pissing my pants. Like, it was bad. Like, that was one of the best laughs I've had in my life to this day. And I've seen some funny <laughs> and been involved with some funny shit. But that, that nigga, Carlton, crying that, it's funny. Alfonso don't get the credit he deserves. Dying, yo. Uh, runner up from that show is when that nigga was dragging himself across the set. Because he thought Will had killed somebody. <laughs> and that nigga was like, no. Nah. was dragging. <laughs> all the way around all the scenes and shit. Yeah. Oh, my God, man. I ain't going to front. Fresh Prince and Martin probably are up there as, like, two of the top two funniest. Like, maybe not yeah. every yeah. single show or every single thing. But as far as, as a collective. added up the collective funny, like, hilarious moments not just the like Haha, that's good but like the most like oh my god this is laugh out loud funny literally they might be tied for like two of like the funniest collections of moments some niggas are stupid. I think so like in our day and age like growing up like those type of shows I, I, I feel like those are two like the real outliers yeah as far as how to measure what a good comedy sitcom is supposed to be for our for like for us you feel me there's other other shit for other genres, other cultures that they may measure as some of their top funniest, but for me, Martin, Fresh Prince, um shit, I can't even think of the real comedy ones. Uh, family matters every now and then, but as a I really don't I wasn't really a big family matters dude, the older Steve guy. Feminine is Stefano Carroll, then he was doing all the different personalities and characters, trying to be like they was like they was trying to make him like Martin with the different characters and shit. But instead of focusing on him, giving him more just natural character development. Mm, but like Martin, him, but it wasn't as funny as them other two. Like it was like it was more you look to family matters for like that family vibe type. Oh, that was that was wholesome. Oh, that was cool, but it wasn't mm -hmm. like like even like it was funny, but it didn't have them like, man, what the fuck? Oh my god, that be yeah, more touching moments than anything. Like the homeboy in the arm because it's so funny. Get up and got a clap. 
Stone oh, no. real quick, tears all in your eyes. Spit, you know. spit your soda and juice out moments. I ain't had none of those. Yeah. I definitely hear that. It won't them. It won't them. Yeah, none of those moments. You're right. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not that show. Well, why we laugh until we cry? What what show or what moments from your your show? Like, what was your biggest moment that like made you cry? Where you was just like, oh damn. Okay. I think everybody's I think everybody's in top top list is that um Will Smith moment when his oh, dad no, that's my number one. Then, yep. I think everybody loved that moment like why don't love me, man? Why don't love me? Get out of here then. I'm back. I'm gonna I'm gonna think that's everybody's moment, man. Everybody loved that moment, man. Um another tough moment. It won't supposed to be a touching moment, but um season three of Martin. You know how he left on season two, and then they was looking for him and shit. And Gina couldn't find him for the first couple episodes, and then he took the took the hood off, and then everybody got emotional. The crowd, the crowd, all ah! Marty finally came back. Touching moment right there. Um, say calm. Um, let's see. Um, it was so just so Cosby's when the family got together for the um grandparents' birthday, and they put on the little show. And everybody dressed up and they were singing the old song. And everybody was coming down the stairs and Rudy took off and baby. was singing her little shit. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that's a real good moment right there, too. I fuck with that shit, too. Um, oh, shit. It's a lot of good moments on sitcom because you got them sappy sitcoms that watch me and you get into the characters and shit. You be like, oh, shit, damn. Uh, what was that? It was one on Saved by the Bell, mother. <laughs> um, Jesse. Um, when she was hooking that shit people. was funny as a motherfucker. <laughs> that shit, well, oh, I'm glad you remind me. Now, that is one of that made me laugh the hardest, probably earliest in my life. That may be the first one that made me laugh like that. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so Oh, oh man. man. And you know a nigga <laughs> like me from the hood, so I'm look. I know they have drug addict act. Fuck that bitch on. That ain't be that shit. Ain't no no nigga drug. Oh, must be some white. Yeah. Oh, the fuck she on, but I don't know nobody on that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's not that not cocaine. That must be meth. Oh, the fuck they on. Crystal meth addict. She must have knew. That's that rich people shit. Everybody. I ain't that's that base ass shit. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is she on? I'm, Kind of, I don't want no bitch. You taking caffeine? No, I be drinking sodas every day. That shit don't act like that, nigga. So excited! I done drank tea and coffee before. Like that shit don't make you act like that. I'm so excited! <laughs> oh shit! Mm. Oh, <laughs> come here and get naked like children. Oh my god! I never take that show seriously. Yes, about it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, I tell you what, the first show that made me cry for real, like on some actual touching, like goddamn, I ain't know that I was supposed to cry from TV shows. I was a little kid. It was on different strokes, and there was an episode when the man in the bicycle shop, I think it was, tried to molest Arnold. Yeah, and he tried to catch him, and I and I can't remember who came in or how he got up out of that bit, but he got up out of there somehow. But I remember it had him, and it was like the little white man trying to get him to take his shirt off and shit. And and uh, Arnold was like, "What? Like, yeah, yo, it was like one of the first shows that I saw that was like about like children getting molested, and I think I may have been younger than." It was bef it was like around the time or it was before I had my own experience with molestation, but like it was around that age, that younger age. So it was it was sometime between eight and eleven. I can say that. But it was on different strokes. And I can't remember if the dude was a bicycle owner or like a toy shop owner or what, but it was like they was in the back storeroom or some other shop and that nigga was trying to get he he was like trying to get Arnold to take his shirt off and shit and Arnold was like mm, I don't feel like this is right 
And then somehow or another, Arnold got out. I don't know if somebody came and distracted him or he snuck out the window or something, but he got up out of that bitch. But I don't know, that shit was creepy as fuck. And I just remember sitting at home crying like, oh, don't touch Arnold. Leave him alone. Yeah. What you talking yeah. about? As well as. I was just home, mad as shit. All sad. <laughs> Why Willis will ain't coming to help him? She by himself. Oh, shit. Yeah. Poor oh, Arnold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were fucking with it. Um, hmm. All right. So I got two Dang. more categories I want to get your take on. Um, okay. Wait, Damn. What? Yeah, that auto will fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, shit. Look like it's auto, man. Yeah. Fuck with like being a kid and you, you know, the age auto portraying and you looking at this lady like, no, nah, don't get my boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my next category, though, hopefully this brings you back up and kind of brightens your day a little bit more. Um, what moment from a show was like, your favorite moment where you knew this show was going to be your shit, like that crossover moment in a show where you was like, okay, let me try this out. Okay, this guy. Mm-hmm. But then it's that moment that's like, oh, yeah. I'm tuning in every week. They got me. I'm stuck here for the rest of it. Um, now, see, I've been portrayed by some of the moments. Mm. But I'll give you, I'll give you like one example. Like it's an old TV. Once again, I'm a TV show. I love old ass TV show. So mm-hmm. it's a TV show um starring Lamont from Sanford and Son, but it's after Sanford and Son, like when he first left the show. You feel me? I, I feel they like told... I remember that. I, I think I know what you're talking about. I don't remember the name yeah. of it. I, I feel like I remember that. The show is called Baby I'm Back. It's based in D it's based in uh, Washington, DC. Homeboys on that show. No, oh, uh, ain't none of the Sanford and Son cast on this show. You talking about Sanford after he left after um Lamont left, Sanford and Son kept on, but they just dropped the son. Made a little storyline about him leaving him doing whatever and just kept sampling. And he opened like a little hotel and shit on the side of um on the side of the junkyard and shit. Yeah, it was a hotel. But on um, Baby I'm Back, the premise is um Lamont was married and left his wife and kids. Mm-hmm. Came back, moved into the same apartment building it is. His ex-wife, they moved on, but they never got divorced, so they still married. The new husband don't know that they still married. <laughs> The kids still want dad to be around. So the moment is like the kids know he back. Grandmama don't know he back because grandmama hate his ass because he of course he left the family. Mama still got a thing for him, but she mad because he left the family. And the new dude, I think he either in the he he's some dude in DC. And he he worked, he got some good job in DC. And of course Lamont still ain't got no he ain't got shit going for him, but being the dad. Man, Lamont. So, Go ahead and spend time with them kids, but let that man stay in his life, pay them bills. So, motherfucking um, shit come up. Like I said, they live in the same apartment complex. She uh, she bump into him, but not realizing he live in the same apartment complex. Like, what you doing here? He make up some bullshit story. So, end up coming to the door. The kids invite him over for dinner, some shit. <laughs> end up telling mom right before he knock on the door. She mad. She go to the door. He door knock. She open the door. He be like, "Baby, I'm back." Oh. <laughs> Well, you not. Man. And that moment was like, oh, should I? I watch it, maybe funny. But it let me down after that. So. <laughs> Yo, that's bad. Yeah. Greatly let me down. Greatly let me down. Lamont can't hold a show by itself. Baby, I'm whack. Yeah, Lamont's not a showrunner. <laughs> he he need Fred. He need Fred. He couldn't do that by himself. Yeah, I think they got a few. I think they got like nine episodes. And that's it. He kind of dropped by himself. Yeah, it's he dropped the ball on that one. Um, I can believe it. Uh, but um, shit, the first episode of Martin. As soon as I saw that, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fuck with. I'm gonna fuck with this." Mm. It was like the, the the how the episode just all came together was just funny as shit. Like at that time, I hadn't seen nothing like that. You feel me? So I was like, you know what? It's something about this. It's an all black show. Like. I can connect with it. I may be young and can't really understand all the jokes, but right. it's still funny to me now. Let's let's see what's got going on. Then he started coming up with the different characters in the later episode. I'm like, yeah, this, this uh, good decision, good good damn decision. Martin, 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 damn it, right, damn right. I don't remember the pilot of Martin. I kept trying to remember the first episode. Shit. Now it's a it's a show 
Kevin Hart had a show, and it didn't go. It didn't go big, but it, all his episodes on um YouTube. Him and Phase on Love on him. Phase on Love. Family or something. Yeah, yeah. You feel I me? heard about it from his book, but I didn't. It, it it wasn't all it was cracked up to be, but they had a good cast and were better writers. It really could have took off. You feel me? It could have been a good show. The premise of it was good. It was like he was um he was the nephew. I think I think he was a nephew living with the family. Yeah, yeah, I think he was the nephew living with the family. Had moved in with him. He was supposed to be a big star, but it flopped. Moved back home and shit. And then had to deal with regular life. Hmm. The premise was good. You feel me? I mean, but just the yeah. I guess the writers just won't dare back then. Like if somebody could come up with that, just bring the show back up now with a different cast, I think it could do some shit. Feel me like cover some topics from nowadays, motherfuckers will go through because motherfuckers know. It's, it's it's stars out there, YouTube stars, real stuff, other type of stars out there that had a little bit of fame and flopped and had to go back home and got regular jobs and hate with motherfuckers see him and shit dipping dot ish. So I mean, like, I believe something like that could could take could take flight in nowadays, but that was a good little show for me. How about you? Um, I think uh my favorite moment, all right. So obviously I done mentioned it before, Breaking Bad is my favorite TV show of all time, period. And I think the moment that I knew I was gonna like that show is uh it had been slow the first like episode ish. And they get to a point where like they had shown a preview of like these pants in the desert. And you didn't really understand why they was flapping off this RV. But then over time you get to understand that this nigga be taking his pants off so that his clothes don't get the smell of the chemicals and shit in it from him cooking up the batches. So he out there cooking up a batch and they get basically a uh, strong on by the Mexican dude. And he get away by throwing some, some chemical down and basically exploding the shit in their face and they riding off, but this nigga ain't got on no pants. And it was something about this nigga. I was like, man, this fucking old ass white man and just took off in his drawers after blowing up some shit in the Mexican face. Like he know he gonna die. Oh, this about to be crazy. Let me see where the fuck this going. And I'm glad I did, cause from cause that it was like one of them make or break episodes. It was like it got to be the the second half of the first episode, or it's somewhere in the second episode. But it was like in that moment of like, all right, if this shit don't pick up, man, I'm about to be like, fuck this. I don't care what people are talking about. That shit ain't about to be shit dry now. And it was some that shit picked up, and from there it was all to the races for the rest of the show. So it was like. That moment kind of is what grabbed me. It was like, nope, stick with this shit. This shit about to get good. And yeah. And then uh my other moment was uh when they had the episode on South Park, when they had the alien that was in Carpenter's ass. At, as a teenager, like at first I didn't really care for that show, but for some reason, like I think that might have been the first episode, but I never saw that episode first. Like I didn't get on South Park till like it had been out for like a couple of seasons. Like it, it might have had our, it might have been almost they was about to go into making their movie by the time I actually realized and kind of got into it. I feel you. I got on late too. Yeah. So like I saw the shit out of order, but I had seen a couple episodes and I was like, man, this shit. I don't know. I, I, I it won't catch me. But for some reason, that episode, I thought that shit was hilarious. And it was like happening to the right character because Cartman got on my fucking nerves. And it was just great. I, I just thoroughly enjoyed that show. Like, I was like, all right, let me check out some more of these. And then I started liking the shit because I caught on to some more episodes that kind of like was like, oh, this this my, yeah, this my type of humor. But yeah, them, them like my two moments for that. Now, go ahead. Same feeling. For the Walking Dead. Now, when the Walking Dead, that very first episode came on, it had a little Rick and whatever the old his um partner name was, and then Rick got shot. Nigga woke up in the hospital. I'm like, all right, I already know it's gonna be about some zombie shit because I already seen the trailers and the previews for for the series before it came out, before the actual F series came out. Then I'm just, all right, where what the zombies gonna come in? What, what what's gonna happen? Like, what's gonna lead up to it? So I'm already into it before I'm into it. But as the story progresses, it just grabbed me more. I'm like, okay, this nigga's blackout. Wake up in the hospital. What the fuck going on? This how it is? And you just follow his story. 
Like, bet. I'm into it. I, 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 I'll fuck with Rick Grimes. I, I'll see where the story lead me. We can do something with this. Yeah, you feel me? So I, I, I dug into that one. I, I fuck with The Walking Dead. Um, That's another I'm show. Start. Another show just grabbed my attention when I first started watching it. Um, uh, shit, Squid Game. Squid Game, Carmen. Squid Game. Squid Game. You feel me? Like, first five hey, minutes. Catch me at first. Squid Game caught, caught me when they got to that damn. That that. <laughs> I was, when I tell you, bro, I know it won't post. It, it, that I know when they wrote that part of the show and they was shooting that money <laughs> in their brain. They was like, oh, this going to be great shock value. They're going to be tripping off of the gore. But when that nigga did that, I, I was like, oh, this is my shit. I like this show. Let me see what this old nigga about to do. I, I didn't even know he was going to be important at that time. I just was like, let me just follow him till they kill him because this going to be funny. <laughs> Let me see what this old nigga about to do. Cause he good. <laughs> or my attention in a scene that won't even about him. This shit ain't this shit about these two dudes. And I keep, I keep trying to figure out what this old nigga about to do next. This nigga just keep posing all happy and shit. The fuck he grinning. Everybody else looks terrified. Why the fuck is this nigga grinning? This nigga having a time his motherfucking life out there. <laughs> like this nigga, do you hear them automatic weapons shooting around you, nigga? Why are you so giddy? This ain't the time to frolic. And I'm a frolic herb. But I'm scared to shoot. This ain't that Everybody vibe, was scared, boy. crying. This nigga running. This ain't that vibe, my boy. Hell no. One time for pay. One time for pay. <laughs> One time. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Another new, a new show. Got something to deal with The Walking Dead. I caught it. Um, uh, forgot where I caught it on. Um, the website you sent me. But I forgot what platform it comes from. Um, it's Tales from Tales of the Walking Dead. So what it is is a bunch of new different characters. And they're giving they store their individual stories of where they at right now, currently, like in the where the universe is and in that walking dead universe. So Terry Crews on it, um, and some other famous actress, she on the first episode. So they two got these stories, but they stories cross and they, and they story go to start going together. Um, and then it's episode three. I forgot that one, but episode one caught me, so I'm like, all right. Terry Crews, he a loner, so he didn't got to he done set his house up perfectly for the end of the world. So he was already ready for everything when he came. He worked out every day, listened to the radio, and got his dog. They had the same routine every day till his dog died, and then he just by himself and lonely. Ain't no internet no more, so he really can't do nothing on that no more. So all he doing is re reading back on his old chat message text. So he's like, all right, bet. He had made a little girlfriend or a girl he got the close to before and that went out. So he's like, all right, I'm going to try to go find her in real life and see where she at. He take off on his motorcycle, prepare for, prepare for everything, and just take off. End up running to this other girl. She just set a trap up for his dumb ass. Boom. She catch him, hold him up with a gun, not knowing ain't no bullets in the gun. The whole time she got a gun to you, you ride with an empty gun to you. So you scared she going to shoot you, but ain't nothing that you get shot with. Eventually, he find out ain't no bullets in it. They tussle, whatever. She get the best of them, but they end up getting along and telling each other their stories. They separate somehow. He find old girl that he was looking for, but she psycho and she crazy. So she then gave him a, um, uh, a brownie laced with some type of drugs, get them all woozy, and she about to kill him when old girl find the same, find her too, and find the house. Uh -huh. She tell him, she tell him about old dudes like, have you met him? He was, I know he came looking for you. He was trying to find you. He thought you was on the internet or whatever. He like, she was like, no, nah, I don't have no clue what you're talking about. So she take her in the basement too. She tried to get her the same type of brownie. But old girl that met up with Terry Crews, she in the plants and everything. She a vegan. She know about plants uh, plants and all the drugs you can make from plants and all that shit. So a girl gave her the brownie. She was like, you know, it ain't fun. It ain't cool to get somebody an edible without letting them know it's drugs. <laughs> so she was like, what? They start tussling. Old girl, the um, Terry Crews would end up killing the new girl, the crazy one, saving Terry Crews. They escape. I'm like, oh, I like that. I fuck with this shit a little bit. This is uh, this all in the first goddamn episode. Shit. All right. I'm going to see where this goes. I'm going to try to walk. And another show, the last show, get on 60 Days In. I fuck with 60 Days In. What's that? Yeah, oh, should you know what's saying 60 Days In? Uh, it's like a semi, somewhat reality show, but it ain't a reality show because it takes place in real actual jails. So it takes six volunteers, six regular other motherfuckers, 
and put him in jail undercover. Oh, working for him. I have seen that. My wife uh watched that shit sometimes. That is my shit. Like currency, then they got actual former inmates and they put their ass back in jail working for the um working for the um the warden and the sheriff to try to get information so they can try to help better the prison. But of course, they former inmates, so some of them falling back into their old former inmate behavior. And they already told them, you go ahead and do anything, we gotta charge you like regular inmates. Yeah, they tripping. They trying to get people knocked off. Like, <laughs> mm -mm. and you got to go in there holding. It. They they make up a story for you, so you got to go in there and try to remember your story because you know when you go in there, everybody trying to figure out who you are, question you, and question your story. Why you locked up, such and such? And if you 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 ain't right, well your story ain't right. Nigga gonna know you. The fuck that that shit don't sound right. You here for what? In, in this county? Why are you in this county from all the way over there? You're trying to cut a charge over there. I know that company. My my cousin worked for them. You lying? Yeah, shit like that. You remember? Shit? Fuck you up. <laughs> shit like that. One nigga got in there. He was a he a he a former he a CEO, but he went in there. He a CEO from a different county. He went in there undercover. He ain't make out of um what's the, what's the shit? He ain't make out of the intake. What that? As soon as he went in the intake, they put him in the holding cell. He gave it a stress signal. He's like, I, can't, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, I couldn't be on no show like that. No, nah, I'm not putting myself in harm's way. Nah. nah. Um, well, since we got into, like, the shows that, like, they had these moments that made us be like, oh, this going to be my shit right here. I'm going to fuck with this. What moment from a show or shows hit you to where you were like, yeah, I used to like this, but I ain't gonna like this no more. I think I'm done with it. Um, mm. damn, it's been a lot of those. I've stopped watching a lot of TV shows. Um, but I used to like Seinfeld to that Kramer incident. Ah, okay, okay. So, I it was an actual show moment, but it was an out show moment dealing with the characters. So I stopped watching the show altogether. It's like fuck it. I don't want to have nothing to do with that individual anyway. I mean, so I just stopped watching the show altogether. Um shit, there's been so many shows I just stopped watching and forgot about. Motherfucking um, let me see. Well, I'm trying to get mine. Why don't you go? Shit, let me know yours. May spark them at me. Um, so I got two. Um I used to really like the Agents of Shield show. Um, when it first came out, like the first few seasons, I was really into it. Or the first couple of seasons, I was really into it. I liked the way they was like tying in shit from the MCU without making the show about the actual MCU. And they were finding like ways to have unique storyline and shit. I was fucking with it. It was a good show. Me and the wife was watching that shit and everything. And then they went into like space onto this weird planet with this weird creature that was like, I don't even know what it was, but they didn't explain it well. And it was just like, well, what does this got to do with like anything? Like, why do like you, you, it was, it was just doing too much. It was like, they jumped the shot. I was like, oh yeah, they yeah. are doing weirdo shit on this. Let me get up out of here. They, they, they done oh, they yeah. lost the essence of what was making the show good. And I oh, watched the show since. I couldn't tell you what happens after that because I just fell off. But that, um, there was two more moments. Uh, one moment was when they killed Brian on Family Guy. I think it was on one of the seasons in the past two, three years. But they like killed Brian and it was like acting like he didn't he wasn't there no more for a couple episodes but they kept alluding to him still so it was like awkward it was like oh yeah they about to start doing some weird old Simpson shit like they 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 grasped him for straws so i left it alone i haven't watched that show ever since and then my last one was uh there was this show called heroes and mm. and it was like uh they had the little girl Hayden Penitentiary she was like Wolverine but without claws like she could regenerate herself and heal herself they had another dude that could kind of fly or something like that they had another dude that was like uh what could like manipulate some shit or something but they had like a bunch of different little like superhuman people and the super and the super villain was this dude that could like 
take people's power. Mm. And it got okay. to the point where he had so many goddamn powers, it was like, all right, man, y'all done made this nigga fucking OP. Like, I don't even believe one of these niggas gonna beat him now. Like, all right, I'm done. Like, like y'all done gave it. Like, they had let him absorb so many motherfuckers' powers. Like, this niggas could do everything. Like, he was virtually unbeatable as a bitch. Yeah, like, he was super fast, could fly, could shoot fire out of his skin, could, was impervious to everything, was super strong. Could draw real good. Could clip toenails. Could do hair. Could goddamn. Could could balance his checkbook. Like this nigga was a fucking like goddamn man. This nigga can't do nothing. Is it anything he can't do now? He done took everybody shit. What is he? Who gonna, fight him? <laughs> who gonna hurt this nigga? Regular man. Like this, this nigga. Like you can't even hit this nigga with kryptonite. Like he done absorbed that shit. Nope. Oh no! Nah. I am. Oh, like, oh now y'all done made it no fun. So it was like what they did for Goldberg. It was time. like you built them up to the point where, like, all right, I don't even believe no nigga can beat them now. Like now, you just made it no fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, Hundred and seventy-seven and oh, yeah, yeah, like real like, damn, like the real like, nigga. first it was cool because it was like suspenseful. Like, all right, if he get this power, then. Uh, and they're gonna have to find a nigga that's gonna be able to counteract that power, or then they're gonna have to find their own person because I think they had a person that could like do something similar, but mm-hmm. it didn't last as long. Like, like the bad guy, his shit stayed permanent, but the dude that was a good guy or something, he had like a shorter term version of it. But it was like, all right, so where they gonna find somebody to like be able to counteract that? Because this nigga done killed the nigga that had that power. So, so at first it was cool, it was like a cat and mouse game, like. They gonna get to the person that's gonna be able to counteract the power before he get his next power. Then it oh. was like like after you like okay. fifteen dudes, he didn't suck you, but like all right, bro. What else? What, what else is possible? God damn. Yeah, where well, we gonna go with this? Uh, you don't wrote yourself into a corner here, guy. Uh, you gonna find somebody just like him, and I'll do can do the same thing to him and suck all the power he didn't suck them. Right. Yeah. Like the show supposed to be fun now. Now. I got a show. It's it's a it's a quite recent show. I, I don't think a lot of people know about it. Now, if you ever um watch boxing or UFC, you know they got their own reality show somewhere, like the contender shows. Now, I fuck with the contender, um, the original boxer series contender. I fuck with that. I fuck with the UFC version. Now they have a South African version as well. I do not fuck with that shit. Let me come on camera for this. <laughs> I do not. I repeat, I do not with that shit. It's it's on Netflix now. It's on Netflix. They got a, I think, one full season. And I don't fuck with this shit. I don't know what the fuck they doing. But mixed martial arts and and what it means to them, I don't think it means the same thing to everybody else. This shit is a clusterfuck of a show. New. No. I started watching the first episode. I got like 30 minutes into it, and I was like, you know what? That was a total waste of time. But I'd rather have been searching for a show than watching that show. How do they fuck up? Huh? How do they fuck up fighting? Fighting is fighting. Because the premise of the the premise of a show like that is I uh, it's a competition show. You separate teams, it's, it's a competition. You the, the basis of the uh, these by these persons training, these persons training, whoever the, the, got the next fights, the episode focuses on them. That's every show premise. These motherfuckers play games and shit, and they got competition that's games, and then they fighting real fighting because and then they got lying about they they happen. Like one dude, like, yeah, I'm a hundred and oh, and I'm 27. So then in the background, the narrator was like, yeah, but all records prove that he's probably 30 something or almost 40 years old. <laughs> it's like, yeah. the fuck is going on? What the fuck is really going on? They yeah. yeah. I no. can't fuck with that though. That shit, that, nah. If you want to watch a show to just get irritated, go ahead and watch that shit. It's on Netflix. I don't know. I don't even remember the fucking name of it. But it's a it's like an African version of the Contender series for mixed martial arts. Contendere. La Contendo. Uh-uh. That shit is fucking horrible. La Contanda. 
fucking horrible. It's fucking horrible. Um, shit. I used to watch Dog the Bounty Hunter until I found out he was racist. That's a good one. I can't talk about these off-camera uh, issues, but yeah, there's been some shows that have been canceled. Yeah. Um, shit. Yeah, that, that's that's a biggie right there. <laughs> you know, when I stopped, uh, what was the uh, show I used to watch real heavy? It was The Real World. Can't remember the season, but I remember the dude. Come and be my baby tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who used to be a real world head, that's going they gonna know what I'm talking about. I can't uh, remember. Yeah. Well, I don't remember what city they was in, but I just remember that black nigga was like, "Come and be my baby tonight." <laughs> the fuck out of here with this bullshit, man. And they ended an the episode with that shit, with this nigga singing that shit. And I was like, oh, I'm done with this shit. I'm good. I'm good. They lost. That's hilarious. They might win some, but they just lost one, goddammit. Lost that shit. Fuck this shit, I'm out. There's a definite big fucking loss on that one, goddammit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll match you with that one. Okay. When the black, when Black Ink, your show Black Ink first got, first came on. I was interested in it. That shit fell off so hard. Yeah. I was so interested in it because I was like, okay, it's based on an all-black tattoo shop and they struggle trying to put it together. I was like, okay, the first couple episodes, cool. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Then they introduced all the drama. I was like, no. As soon as Caesar got with Duchess, the show went all downhill. I was like, no. That's what I'm fucking with it. Drained the life out of that show so bad. So bad. They could have followed Teddy. Or anybody else, but them two was just like, shut up. That was like a wrecking ball. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I hated hearing her talk. Y'all keep putting them on screen. Tell them to shut up. Uh, like, oh. I hated hearing her fucking talk. Like, her voice made my skin crawl. No apologies needed. Man, mm -hmm. you want to see somebody, like, when they smile, they make you, like, Ugh. Like her smile used to make me recoil for some reason. Like it was. Oh, oh damn, that's sad. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know that. Ain't no need shit. Ain't no shit. Some shit is just it is, it is what the fuck it is. The world feel that way about me. It's all fair. Hey, shit. You talked about Jesus. I can't walk on water. So who am I to be above getting talked about or talking about somebody? Like, you know. Shit, it ain't what it is. It damn sure is what it is. 